This is called What Makes a First Robot Go? Um, thanks. I'm Jeanette Head. I work for Atomic Object. I'm on Twitter. This is Miles Aikens. And down here we have Qbot. So first robotics, um, first stands for, for, recognition and for, <laughs> for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. Um, so first robotics is a K-12 program starting with um, the little Lego robots um, for elementary schoolers and going up to these larger robots for high schoolers. Um, so teams or like schools will build robots and they will take them to competitions and compete them. Um, so the official blurb says that they are combining the excitement of sport with the vigors of science and technology and that it's the ultimate sport for the mind. Um, so there's a lot of roles and people that help make a first robot go. Um, so one of the adult roles is the role of mentors. Um, mentors is what the first program calls um, professionals in the community that volunteer their time to work with teams and help them build the robot. So I am a mentor um, for this team, and I mentor their programming electronics. We're, we're learning soldering, we're learning for loops, all sorts of really cool stuff. We're programming complex systems. Um, we also help fabricate, help engineer, help design. Um, another big important role that um, adults have is sponsoring. So we have a team of 50 students. We build three robots. We build this robot, we build a practice version of it, and we build a, a junior varsity team builds a robot. And we attend at least two competitions every year. Um, so sponsors are a huge part of making that happen. So if you're an adult in this room and interested in um, mentoring or sponsoring, um, come talk to either of us. We'd love to talk to you more. So, um, yeah. At the core of any FRC team are the students, like me. So students are the ones who design, fabricate, assemble, and program the robot for competition. Uh, we get a lot of help from professionals like Jeanette, but the robot is in no way mentor built. Um, students who participate in FRC are much more likely to go into uh, a field related to what they experienced on the team, such as electrical engineering or computer science. Uh, being on the team is a lot like participating in a varsity sport, uh, but infused with real life skills. And anyone who participates in this varsity sport for the mind, as it's called, can eventually become a professional. All right, so, so this is our team. Lots of people. Uh, Miles is going to be getting the robot spin up here. Um, but so let me talk a little bit. This year's game that we um, played this year, this is called First Stronghold. The game is different every year. You have to build a new robot and a, a new strategy. Um, so there's two key components to this game. There's all of these defenses that you see here. Um, so the robot has to be able to get up and over those. And then there's these towers and these boulders. So the robot also has to be able to score boulders in the towers. And it's a, it's a 3v3 match. There's a red team and a blue team, not randomized. Um, each match, it's new. And this is a match in progress. Um, not the most in focus picture, but we see three robots down here. Um, one's crossing defenses and the others are scoring. The end of a match, if it's successful, looks like this. This is a robot that's actually hanging on the tower. It's actually lifted itself up. And um, these two of us have to surround the tower to get more points. There's also lots of unsuccessful matches. Um, these robots have flipped. Um, this robot here flipped going over this defense, and the other one tried to get over anyways and also got stuck. Uh, it can be very funny, lots of things can happen. Um, but when you have big machines and complicated problems, you get all sorts of failures. Um, so this is our robot. It's also up in the front here. Um, so we have two arms. We have one for um, kind of helping maneuver defenses. That's the bulldozer looking arm. And then in the back, we have a gatherer that helps um, gather balls and put them into a shooter, which you can kind of see um, at the top here. There's more pictures. So, so here you kind of see the bulldozer arm is about to come down um, and push those little cheater tatters um, backwards so the robot can get over it. Um, in the middle there is a shooter. That's where the ball is going to be coming out and we take a shot. All right. And so these are some of the tech specs. So we have a, a dry chain on here. We have four motors, and we have encoders and gyroscope sensors. So we can sense rotation as well as distance and velocity. Um, the gatherer arm also has four motors, two to lift and two to spin. Um, and that has the potentiometer that so we can use to detect the angle at which the gatherer arm is at. Um, the defense arm um, has another two motors to lift it and also an encoder that we use to do um, 
angle. We have PID control on all these. If you're familiar with what that is, it helps us go to the angle we're trying to get to. Um, the shooter at the top here, um, which you can see really well in this picture, has two motors and it spins these wheels. And it uses its encoder to always be spinning at the same velocity when firing shots to get a consistent shot. Um, and a question I get a lot is that is the controller on this thing? It's called a Robo Rio. It's by Natural Instruments. It's first provided hardware. And you thought this wasn't a JavaScript talk, but our driver display that Miles is looking at right now has a JavaScript and HTML powered display. And, and that's our robot. Do you want to? And if you're, if you're interested in learning more about the team, we have pamphlets. We're, here, we're happy to answer questions. But that's our robot. Thanks very much.